This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 2, this is Section 11, Use of the Body. David Despite the fact that the body will break down and degenerate and will never be immortal, despite the fact that it is very temporal, like everything else in the projected cosmos, the mind has a big investment in trying to make it a good home. Therefore, If you think that you can make it live longer and more comfortably by exercising and eating the right things, then you will do it. But the flip side of that is that there is a strong identification and belief in the body. The body in this perspective is not seen as nothing. It is seen as something. That is why the great search for health is in the wrong place. Health can accurately be described as inner peace, as a mind that has let go of judgment and the ordering of thoughts, a mind that reaches a true perception A more stabilized perception is a mind at peace. That is a mind that is healed and is truly healthy. Friend, so even to consider the body as an instrument that the Holy Spirit uses, I have to regard that body as nothing? I think there is that trap of thinking that because it is going to be used by Holy Spirit, that somehow it is something, so I have to take care of it in a certain way. I am responsible for the kind of food that I put in it and the exercises that I provide for it, etc. It is as if I am thinking This is a temple of the Holy Spirit, so I have to regard it with respect, and that means this, that, and the other. But this, that, and the other are just ways the mind validates that the body is something, when it is really nothing. It is only when it can be seen as nothing that it can be turned over and really used by the Holy Spirit? David Yes, there is also a subtle trap of denying the body. When we talk about the body as nothing, it is in a very deep, ultimate sense of what is truly is. We are not asked to deny the perception of the body. The most helpful way to come at this is with a sense of purpose or with the question, what is it for? This brings it back to the level of mind. What is helpful here is to look at the ego's purpose for the body and the Holy Spirit's purpose for the body. As that gets sorted out in the mind, one is able to begin discerning the ego's purpose from the Holy Spirit's purpose. As the mind begins to voluntarily give up the ego's purposes, then the body becomes more and more peripheral in awareness. It approaches nothing. Friend, 
So there is never a necessity of focusing on the body. The thing to do is just focus on the purpose and the rest will fall into place accordingly. The way to get to a point of regarding the body as nothing is by focusing on the purpose. David Yes, the idea of the body as a temple is an important thing. It is regarded as the temple of the Holy Ghost in the Bible. This is a starting point, a stepping stone. It is a step away from making the body evil. It is one thing to call the body unreal or nothing. But the ego would take the step to say that the body is evil. Saying that it is a temple for the Holy Spirit is saying that it can be used for the Holy Spirit's purpose. In that sense, and in that sense only, is the body a temple. It has nothing to do with the body in and of itself. It has to do with that intention, that purpose in mind. We could say that the body that is used solely for communication is a body that is being used by the Holy Spirit. Friend, and what exactly is communication? It is not necessarily what I have been educated to believe that it is. It does not have to include two bodies. It happens at a mind level and that is the only place communication happens. At a mind level? So why do I need a body to communicate if it only happens at the mind level? David Every mind that seems to believe in the world believes in separation and in the body. It believes that communication has been limited so that communion has been blocked. Communion could be called mind communication or even telepathy. It is called by many different names. The mind believing in separation has pushed the experience of communion out of awareness. The body has literally been imposed as a limit on communication. It appears in this world that if two bodies are not together, communication is limited. They cannot talk to another unless they use a telephone or walkie-talkie or some kind of aid? You need material aids to help with communication. But in the ultimate sense, we are back to belief. When the body is believed in, when the world is believed in, there is a limit on communication. The world was made to defend against communication. The Holy Spirit is our communication link with the Father. The world was made to cover that over. The Holy Spirit has to work with these beliefs. As the mind lets go of its beliefs in the world, it appears, gradually, that the powers of the mind are returned to it. Telepathy, clairvoyance and intuitions seem to become more prevalent. Actually, the mind is just returning to its natural condition. These are not supernatural powers 
that only rare individuals can develop. They are very natural modes of communication. Friend, so the communication is always there. It has always been there, but we are unaware it is covered over. David, yes, and it is a strong investment in the body that does this. The body is the chosen home of the deceived mind. It gets back again to purpose. Communication is the sole function or purpose that the Holy Spirit gives the body, while the ego uses it for pride, pleasure and attack. The purpose of pride, pleasure and attack actually constrains communication. Friend, if communication is solely at a mind level, why have a body to be used for communication? I think I hear you saying that as long as the mind believes in the body, then the Holy Spirit uses the body for communication. It is only the belief in the body that has the body enter into the communication at all? David Yes, there are no bodies in the holy instant. Revelation is beyond bodies. Revelation is direct communication from God to God's creation. As the mind gives up its false ideas, beliefs and judgments, it gets drawn into the holy instant. In the holy instant, communication is completely restored. Bodies are like symbols. The Holy Spirit will reach the mind in whatever way he can. It can be through the voice of a friend, a song, a billboard, a record lyric, etc. There are many ways and forms. But in that sense, the body is a symbol. The Holy Spirit is using symbols to reach the deceived mind because the deceived mind believes in symbols. Metaphorically, as we move forward and get clearer, more able to line up with the Holy Spirit's purpose, we are asked to reach our brothers who believe in the world of time and separation. We are asked to reach them using symbols they understand. Once again, Jesus was a great example of that. He spoke in parables when he spoke to the masses. And he spoke of higher ideals and concepts with the apostles and disciples that had the ears to hear. In both cases, it was the Holy Spirit speaking through him, using whatever symbols the mind could grasp. You also have examples of Jesus going off into silent communion with the Father, where not a word was spoken. Here we have a range of communication with words which is still very crude. But as the beliefs are let go of in the mind, we get back to communion, which is totally wordless. We conclude this section in tomorrow's episode with part two of Use of the Body. <laughs>